So in this section of management decision tools, we'll discuss exponential smoothing, uh, one of the uh, most advanced uh, forecasting method and very, very state of the art because of uh, a number of properties and attributes that it builds, uh, builds into its formula and the way it calculates and looks at data. So again, we have this sequence. What is exponential smoothing? The next forecast is given by alpha times the data, the latest data, plus one minus alpha, the kind of complement of alpha, times the most recent forecast, okay, where alpha is a number between zero to one inclusive. So there are infinite number of values of alpha between zero to one. And uh, we are just looking at a very simple formula. That's it. Nothing sophisticated. And uh, yet that is state of the art. Really, really um, wonderful forecasting method. First of all, let's try to understand the formula, the forecasting formula, right? So, so it says, uh, just, just repeat here a bit. F of t plus 1 is alpha of x of t plus 1 minus alpha of f of t. Now notice that in order to come up with the next forecast, we don't need a lot of information. All we need, as the formula suggests, is that at time t, all right, at time t, we are here and now, and we want to know the, the forecast value for t plus 1. At time t, we would have already, uh, first of all, forecast our green value and received our red data value. All right, now the time is to forecast t plus 1. Uh, graphically, what it means is that the next forecast will be somewhere between the lower of the pair of green circle and red cross and the up the higher of the pair all right it will be between the two because the green circle could have been above x right so doesn't matter whichever is higher will be the upper limit all right and uh, whichever lower is going to be the lower limit of your next forecast so your next forecast is going to be hovering around these two it will not stray too far off and what controls the uh, whether the circle is closer to the lower bound or upper bound is of course alpha okay so so you see that uh, when alpha is zero what happens to our formula our f of t plus one is going to be f of because alpha is zero we have uh, let me just put this to a bigger screen Right. Because alpha is 0, we have f of t plus 1 equals to uh, 1 times f of t. right? And then what is f of t? If you substitute in again, because it is a recurrence relation, you can always plug in any value of t, uh, and this will still hold. right? Uh, so f of t is alpha, which is 0, uh, plus 1. 1 times f of t minus 1. So, so that is equal to f of t minus 1. And the same logic goes minus 2 and so on until it is f of 2. And what is f of 2? f of 2 is equal to f of 1. All right. This f of 1 will stop at this because by definition our t starts from 1 onwards and we cannot go into 0. So this f of 1 is going to be a constant. An initial guess. Initial forecast. Okay, so it will be a number that we supply. We first make a forecast and then we say let f1 be 100. That will be what we do. So we need to know both alpha and f1 so in order to do exponential smoothing you must check that you have these two pieces of information alpha must be given 
F1 must be given. Okay, then in the extreme, the other extreme, when alpha is 1, we have f of t plus 1 equal to uh, x of t. All right, and because 1 minus 1 is 0, ft cancels out and we don't need to ask any further question. But do we recognize this form? This is, this is a form that is called naive forecasting, right? Yeah. And remember what's naive forecasting? What is it good for? It's good for highly fluctuating data. And uh, therefore, the other extreme, when alpha is zero, uh, we have the same forecast all the time. And this works very well when the data is dull. It's not moving. Right? So we have the ability to adapt to uh, both extremes, much like moving average method. The nicer thing is, however, alpha is not discrete integer jumping from one step to another alpha is a continuous uh, value so we have infinite choices we can uh, slice and dice alpha so long as it's between 0 to 1 we can plug it into the formula and it works so exponential smoothing has this ability to very continuously and smoothly adapt to the changing nature of data uh, when it goes from dull to highly fluctuating, fluctuating uh, kind of movements to back to dull uh, status again. And we are able to just change the value of alpha, almost like a slider, right? So it makes calculations really uh, very uh, simple, adaptability very high. And because the formula is very simple, calculation is very efficient, very fast, nothing complicated, no need to average over 1 million numbers, even if t is 1 million, right? So there are a lot of advantages about that. Now, the next thing is uh, the, the fear or the worry that uh, in this method, we are beginning to, as you might have noticed, earlier methods never incorporated past forecast, right? That sounds reassuring because when we don't touch our past forecast and our forecast always contains error then we feel that it's not necessarily true but at least we feel that we reason that um, without touching our old errors our old forecasts we tend not to contaminate the new forecast right i mean that's the kind of logic but here uh, as a state of the art algorithm we are actually touching our past forecast how can that be right so there's a concern but let's try to look deeper into the formula and see if that concern is uh, justifiable. Okay, so we have alpha x of t plus 1 minus alpha f of t, but we don't write f of t. We substitute into the recurrence relation. f of t is alpha x of t minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha f of t minus 1, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to just substitute that in and say alpha x of t minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha f of t minus 1. But again, we are going to plug into the recurrence relation and then get this bunch of results. Uh, f of t minus 2 and so on and so forth right so we keep uh, substituting into the formula and uh, of course there's a there's a tendency for us to think that it goes into infinite uh, listing but no because the t is decreasing and we have a firm uh, start at t equals to 1 so at some point we're going to arrive at at x of 2 right plus 1 minus alpha, f of 2. And f of 2 is still part of the calculation formula. So we are down to x of 1 plus 1 minus alpha, f of 1. But f of 1 is no longer uh, substitutable into the formula because f of 1 is our initial value. It is a constant. It is known, right? It is known up front. So we can now stop at f of 1 and then uh, conclude with the bunch of uh, 
curly brackets. And that's it. That is the alternative form of writing exponential smoothing uh, method. But now let's look at it. Do we have any trace of our past forecast? Uh, nope. They're all gone, right? Except for F1, which is just a number. So in a way, we are basically listening to, getting advice from all our past data. You see that? All of X1, X2, X3, until X of T, the most recent data, they are all participating in advising what is the next forecast. Now remember, if we do this in speed trading, then um, 10 hours from the start, we might be getting into hundreds of thousands uh, of values in terms of T, milliseconds. Right, so, so T can be in the millions even, and uh, what this algorithm is telling us is that in the past 1 million microseconds, or milliseconds, uh, all the data that we have captured are all contributing to telling us what is the best value for the future, for the immediate future forecast. It's amazing, right? Because we can do that very efficiently if we adopt this pattern, this, this formulation, but the, the real understanding, that means the simplicity of this recurrence relation does not hide the fact that it is doing this uh, huge amount of work in, in a very extremely efficient manner. Okay, so the fear of our past forecast errors contaminating with uh, the future forecast, not founded, right? So crushed out.